Yes, welcome back to Motorsport Manager. And in this episode, as I continue my career, I'm just going to completely focus on setting up the car for this one. And we're in Portugal, so I'm going to run through that. There's been a few questions around, hey, what's the best way to set up the car? So I'll run through the best process there, and hopefully you might learn something. Guys, remember, smash that like button down below. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Let's get into it. What I'm going to do is we're at the Portugal circuit. I've got my two drivers, so we'll look to set them both up and um, fire them out there during practice and refine our setup from there. Okay, so let's start with our first driver, Sabato, our old mate. He's not all that happy, to be fair, but anyway, let's look to set his car up. Now, the best thing to do for a start is to get a bit of a basic understanding of what all these things here mean, um, all the different categories, and what all the different parts on your car do and how they affect the handling. Why I'm thinking about I'm changing his tyre to softs. Anyway, so if we take a look at the downforce, you've got higher downforce and lower downforce. So basically the front wing, it can it, it really controls how well your car handles in different types of corners. So if you look at these tight corners here, if you just look at the map over the right there of the Portugal circuit, you've got quite a number of these like really sharp little corners here, 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 there, another one down in here. And for your car to react really well and get around those quickly, you're gonna need a high downforce from your front wing. So you need that one to be set at a higher downforce. Now, your rear wing, that really is talking more about how your car reacts through these uh, faster corners. So you, you've got these sort of medium, uh, sorry, very fast corner there and, uh, and a medium corner. So basically, the more rear wing you have, the better the car will handle on those medium to fast corners. Now, in terms of the handling, you've got understeer and oversteer, and it's very similar in terms of the cornering. Oversteer, that's going to help you get around the sharper corners a lot faster. And the understeer, that helps you on the medium to fast corners. So, that's how those two components work. Now, in terms of the, suspen the suspension, uh, which is over here on the left-hand side, really, um, this, the, it's you can either have a softer or a harder or something in between. A harder suspension is going to help you for those, uh, for those loose... Uh, so, sorry, let's start that again. The harder you have that, or the stiffer you have that, is going to help you on those slower corners the softer you have it or the looser is going to help you on those medium to fast corners. Now in terms of gear ratio, ratio that's linked to your speed balance. So you can either have a car that's really fast off the mark but isn't quite as fast at the top speed or you have, or you have a higher top speed rating which basically means you're not quite as fast off the mark but that end speed is going to be a lot higher. Now a really big uh, a consideration is the, the the setup of the track or how the track is laid out I should say and if you look at this particular track it's actually a bit of a combination it does have a bunch of those slower corners but it does have three sort of decent or you know the home straight and the two back straights it's got a couple of of major straights so when you come into the race weekend you'll get some recommendations about um, what the sort of things in the setup that are going to be important so for Portugal, it says acceleration is crucial. It says low speed is crucial, but it also says top speed is useful. So what that says to me is obviously acceleration is going to be is going to be really important, but also top speed is going to be handy. So it's not going to be fully left in hardcore acceleration. It's going to be slightly on the, probably on the side of acceleration um, to allow you know it's still to have a decent top speed the car. It also talks about uh, low speed is going to be crucial. So that's obviously coming through these low speed corners. You really want to make sure you can get out of those quickly. So having some downforce is going to be is going to be critical in that. So having a high downforce to a, where that front wing is going to help us get around the corner is going to be important. Um, and also, um, you know, get get uh, acceleration to get out of those low speed corners. So anyway, with that in mind, let's look just to set up our two guys in a. You know, we're just going to try to give our best guess to see where we should start with these with this setup, and then we'll fire them out there in single laps and just refine it as we go based on the feedback they give us, and obviously the obviously these smiley faces, and they go everywhere from I think poor through to excellent, and we want to want to get them. We want to get all three of them excellent if we can. So what we're going to do is let's set up our base setup based on what we think is going to happen and work it from there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is front wing I'm going to pump right up. So I'll put it up to say 
18.5 and I generally start at like a 0.5 or a 0.0 just to make life a bit easier when I go and um, adjust it. So I think the downforce is going to be pretty important. So we'll continue to, we'll use the rear wing and pump that up a bit too, up to say 28. And as we can see, we've got our downforce very, very high because that's going to be quite important. Do you notice that when I move those markers, move the um, wing setup, it obviously uh, affected our handling and our speed balance. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind uh, when you're doing your fine tuning. The other thing though is, is I, the other thing to consider I should say is when I move these ones down here however, see how it doesn't affect my downforce up there? So with that in mind, a good little tip is get your downforce sorted for a start and get it to excellent if you can. And then you just need to uh, adjust these two factors using these four over here, tire pressure, tire camber, gear ratios, and suspension stiffness. Because you know that once you've set your downforce, you then don't need to touch your wing angles, and nothing else you, uh, else you do down here is going to affect, affect the downforce. So hey, look, let's, uh, so what else did we say? We said that acceleration was gonna be, you know, we wanted to be slightly more on acceleration than top speed. So let's um, just do a bit of a guess and say, um, maybe a, so 44, so that's slightly on the side of um, of acceleration. And stiffness, well, there's a bit of a combination of corners. So I'm just going to leave it smack bang in the middle. Um, handling is definitely towards oversteer, which I think is where we need to be. So let's leave it at that um, with a view to try to, let's get our wings all set up for a start if we can. So we'll confirm that one there. I'll go and grab my other mate here, old John Pierre and um, we will look to set them up. Now, obviously, you've got these green sections here, and that's what your mechanic's telling you. Hey, it's going to be within those green those green areas. So that's a good start to think of it like think of it like that. So let's get some high downforce on him too. I started at 8.5. I'll go 18.5 for him too, and I'll look to... I'm going to get high downforce, and I'll put him at 28. I think that's the same for both of them. Um, your driver and your car, your car parts and all that sort of stuff is going to affect this. So, um, you know, just be wary of that. That it won't be, the car setup won't be exactly the same for both drivers. So we'll put him down so he's slightly towards acceleration and maybe slightly towards oversteer. So 44 for both. Just as a, just a, bit, as a bit of a best guess based on what we know on the track. Okay, so here I am back in the garage. Um, well, in the garage ready to go. It's race trim. We're in the European series, by the way, in case you're wondering. Race trim, three laps. It doesn't matter. I'm only going to let him out there for one or two laps. Tire choice is soft. Cancel, uh, continue, I should say. And we are sending out Sabato. Way you go, mate. Off you go. I'm just going to leave it on a pretty neutral strategy. I'm just going to wait for him to get to the end of the pit lane. Um, and then I will send out our old mate, Gerard. Okay, he's out of there. Gerard's all ready to go, so we'll send him out too. He's on the softs. Away you go. So what we're looking for here is just a bit of feedback to say, see how our initial setups are looking. Hi guys, we're back in the garage after our first run, and <laughs> this is just unbelievable really. We've got two excellent, so we're right on the money with downforce. We are right on the money with handling and our speed balance is great. That's an optimal balance of 98%, and you could absolutely run with that in a race, no problem at all. That is a fantastic setup, but I'm gonna continue to fine tune it. That's just, that is just dumb luck that we managed to hit them right on the mark there. It's just, usually I just wouldn't do that at all. But, you know, putting all together those factors that we talked about, you know, the, the recommendation from our engineer, the, uh, the, the layout of the track, and knowing how each of the component works, we're able to sort of figure out you know, what What would be the best setup. So what we're going to do here, guys, is let's see if we can nail that speed balance now. So essentially what we'll do is we'll we'll, we'll move this marker here. We'll keep these two the same because we, we need to keep them the same because they're excellent. We'll look to adjust a few things here to um, um, change our speed balance. And for example, we'll move it that way and we'll see whether it goes excellent or whether it gets worse. So it's, let's say we move it to the right and it starts getting worse, then we know that from our original point, it needs to go left. So that's the way, you know, from a process of elimination, you can pretty much get on the mark pretty quickly. Okay, so gear ratio. Um, let's say, look, I think it could actually be, you know, I think the acceleration with those smaller corners, and it did say it was crucial. Perhaps we need to have a shorter gear ratio. So I moved it from, from um, 42 
to 30, I think it was 44 actually, to 38. And as you can see, it didn't, uh, uh, handling it very slightly, it's, it's hard to see, but slightly moved that, not very much at all, it, and it didn't affect our downforce because it doesn't. So our speed balance, we've moved it a little bit that way. Let's see if that is going to change what uh, Sabato is telling us. By the way, I sent him out, he did two laps for that first run. We'll send him out for just the out lap this time, and we'll bring him straight back in, and hopefully he'll have some additional feedback for us. Okay guys, here we are, we're back in the garage with Gerard, and hey, it is a really good start, and this is sort of usually where you'd probably, um, you know, once you understand what the components do, you'll, this is sort of what you can expect to get out on, on a lot of occasions. So we haven't quite nailed the downforce, and I really want to do that for a start, because, you know, obviously once that's set, then I only need to worry about the last two, because uh, these components don't affect the wings. So, look, we're sitting at 18.5 and 28. I actually think when, you know, it did talk about corners being very, very important, the slower corners, and the downforce obviously needs to be important. So with that in mind, I'm going to move him up by 0.5 to 19. There we go. So I'm just making a slight adjustment. As you can see below here, these did move a little bit, but I'm not going to actually deal with those yet. We're on a 92% um, um, set up already, optimum balance I should say, and that is perfectly fine. You go out and race with it, and that is bloody awesome. But I've moved it up by 0.5, the front wing angle, just to increase it a little bit with a view to see whether this gets worse or better. So let's send him back out there. We'll come back into the garage and have a look at our other guys out there racing at the moment. Okay, everybody, we are back in the garage with Sabato. And as you can see, it hasn't changed. Because there goes the one that was previous. There goes the previous one. And this is... Uh, you know, obviously we've got the handling and downfall sorted. That is fantastic. And we really just need to get this speed balance sorted. So the, the yellow one is the setup that I'm selected. And that's for the first run. I've selected the first run. And the grey is what we just did on that last lap that we just did right there. So I moved it to the left and it was still great. With that in mind, I need to continue to move it to the left. Um, well, I could move it either way. But let's continue going that way until we hit a point where that either, either says it's excellent or it drops a level. So then we know we actually need to start going back. Okay, so let's look. Speed balance, acceleration. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Let's just select our setup we just used. And look, it was, was at 38. Let's put it down to 30, 31. There we go. The handling and the downforce will keep the same. How's his tyre looking? It's okay, let's throw him out there and we'll see whether that's going to help us hit those three excellences. Still heaps of time on the clock here for the practice. Because we're only doing one lap at a time from now on in, we should be able to do at least you know, another probably two, maybe even three we might be able to get in. We'll have a look. Okay guys, we are back in the garage, this time with Gerard, trying to nail his setup. And this is an interesting little uh, result that we've got here. We have actually reduced by 2%, so we've made our setup a little bit worse. As I said, we were trying to nail our, our downforce, and in the process, we actually nailed our speed balance. Hey, that is cool. All we need to know now then is, um, you know, we just need to sort our downforce out, and we've got a couple of clues from that last run that's going to help us uh, set that up correctly. So if we look at our speed balance, great. We want to make sure for every run from now on that we keep that marker right there. So what happened on that run? Let's have a look. Why did it get worse? Well, let's look at our first run. Our first run was this, which I've selected as the yellow. We moved it to the left on our and on the run we just did, and it went from great to good. That tells us something. That tells us we don't want to be adding any more downforce, but because going that way reduces our our, our effectiveness of our downforce. We need to move it from to the right from our original position. Speed balance is good. Handling, at the moment, let's not worry too much about handling. Um, we, If we can nail this downforce, then we can focus our entire last bit of the session on handling. So, anyway, with that in mind, uh, let's take a look. Okay, so we know that speed balance, we want to leave it there, but we need to reduce our downforce. So. 18.5 is where we started, remember? So let's move it to eight, back down to 18. So now it's to the right of where we started. Hopefully that will move it from good and move it up two, two positions from good to great to maybe even excellent, hopefully. Hope that all makes sense, everybody. Now, as you see, I made that downforce correction and it's actually moved 
our speed balance off our gray marker. We need to get that back onto the gray marker. You could use tire camber to do that and see it moves it in small increments and now I'm straight back on where we know where we definitely know where the excellent mark is. Hopefully this is all making sense for you guys. Let's throw Gerard back out there and in the meantime Sabato should come back in and we'll see whether we've we've helped out his uh, his setup. Hi everybody we are back in the garage and this is an interesting position. Uh, we have retained obviously our downforce and our handling because we knew where that sat but we've dropped down to good and as we know based on the information we have we should be able to almost nail it in our one of in the next run i think we've got two more runs with this so i think we should nail it in our next run so we want to leave these two the same but let's see where it was if we look at our previous setup what we did is we moved our acceleration um, in our last run actually to the left to have more acceleration and less top speed so by doing that it went from good uh, sorry from great to good so it actually reduced uh, so that tells us we need to be going more towards top speed now if we look at our first one that position that you can see there we know that is great right there so we need to be to the right of that so we were going the wrong way so let's increase our gear ratio here let's put it uh, hold on here what am i doing hold on let's get back to um uh, hold on yes that's it sorry let's increase it up to 50 percent oh, luckily i know what i'm talking about here it goes here i've moved it to the right and let's throw him back out there and see whether we can get this set up perfect it looks like the handling's just slightly off so maybe just no wrong way oh what can we do here maybe tire pressure yep i th there we go we've got a handling directly on where it was where it was so we've put our gear ratio to 50 Hopefully that will get us across the line to change this into an excellent. Let's send Sabato out and see what happens. Okay, and we're with now with Gerard. Now let's just recap where we were. Prior to going out this time, we had a good, a good uh, downforce setting, a good um, handling setting, and a, an excellent speed balance. So obviously we kept speed balance the same. But what we did is we actually ended up, if we just look at our previous setup, we ended up increasing the downforce, which was a good move. And that m ensured that we now are at excellent. So all we need to concentrate on now, guys, is our handling, which through all three runs has remained at good. So we just need to move it one way or the other for a start. And we will see whether that e increases or decreases it. And that will show us which way we should be going. So I think let's go towards Overseer because we know there's a lot of those little sharp corners. Okay, so what we want to do is move it towards Oversteer. So I've uh, so what I've done is I've softened the suspension down to 38%. Let's see if that makes the difference. Okay, everybody. We are back in the garage and what has happened? We haven't made any different <laughs> nothing's happened. <laughs> So it's going to be right in between those two setups there. So we just need to get right in between here and that should be excellent. So let's look to increase the speed balance. Um, we can use the gear ratio. And there we go. We've moved it one. The other two have stayed the same. So this is right in between where we know great is on this side and good was on that side. So it must be somewhere in between because we know it's good over way over here, if you remember. So let's throw them out there. And see whether we can get this right this time. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Okay, guys, we're back in the garage with Gerard. And obviously, I've had a bit of a shocker here because he's gone to okay. Oh, no, it's not a shocker, actually. Remembering, I'm getting my drivers mixed up. Remembering that we actually hadn't touched the handling. So this gives us a massive clue. Because let's check this out. We know, we know that the setup, the handling was good here. This was our run two runs ago. We moved it to the right and it went to poor. We know that it's actually got to move probably two levels to the left of that. So from this yellow setup here, let's move them to the left. So by doing that, let's use the suspension. Move them one to the left here. Let's just refine our speed balance to make sure. I think camber, oh, wrong way. There we go. So hopefully by doing that, we're, we retain our excellent downfalls and our speed balance. We're moving them towards the way that we know 
excellent should be and so he should land on a great or an excellent after this run here let's send him back out we haven't got much time left so it's probably going to be the last run for him so at hopefully at worst we're going to have an excellent great and excellent um you know if we can get three excellences though that would be fantastic let's fire him back out there okay everybody we are back in the garage of Zabata and I'm struggling to really nail this one it's still a 98% optimum balance which is fantastic but what we did if we look at the run before we moved a speed balance and it went from good to great so we moved him from uh, where he was slightly to the left here um, and we moved him in between which is great I think we actually still I think we need to move him even further to the left to be honest Let's have a look where Great is. Great was there. Okay, oh, we didn't move him far enough, did we? We did not move him far enough. Let's look to move him in a couple of... That way there. Handling, let's just tweak that. Oh, I'm not going to be able to, I think. There we go. Hopefully that there is going to get him into the position. Uh, I think we might have done it too far. Yeah, I think that's where we need to be there. And then hopefully by doing that, we'll have nailed the excellent setup. We've only got 22 seconds left. Not much time. Hopefully this is going to be good enough. Okay, guys. We are now in the pre-race screen. And I thought I'd just check out what drives up here. For some reason, it hasn't uh, updated Sabato's um, feedback. So let's just look at how we ended with Gerard. You know, both of them had high 90s in terms of uh, car balance or optimum balance, which is really fantastic. You can race with that and it won't be a problem. But let's take a look at Gerard. And the end answer is we did a great job there. We got it up to 96% optimum balance. Not quite perfect, but still pretty good. And we definitely improved the handling because the handling was a best. This is the best feedback we've had for his handling. It did. It was good. It went to okay, and we ended up getting it to great. And I think it probably just needs to be tweaked just a little bit more, a little bit more understeer, and he will be a perfect setup. So you know, using the information here, let's take a look how what happened here. We started off with great. We we're trying to get our downforce right. By doing that, we accidentally got our <laughs> speed balance correct just by adjusting our downforce, um, giving higher downforce. We then got our downforce right. We knew what our speed balance was, what it needed to be, so we kept it there. We nailed our downforce. So then what we needed to do was work on our handling. So what we decided to do was go towards oversteer for a start, and we moved it to the right to oversteer, and it went from good to okay. So we knew, hey, we're going the wrong way. So then on the last setup, we then moved it. If we take a look at this, that's actually, if we take a look at this as a better illustration, the, if our third run there where we had a good for our handling, we, our last run we just did, we moved it, that's the grey one, we moved it to the left to try to improve it. We probably should have moved it a bit more. And I'd probably if we added uh, that same gap to the left, added a bit more understeer, I'm sure that would hit excellent. So guys, in a nutshell, that's how you do it. It's a bit of a process of elimination. I hope you learned something out of it. I hope it made sense. Um, and look, you might not nail three excellences all the time, but um, the good thing is you can note down, hey, maybe you know what your base setup was, and, and, and you know in future races you, you've got a good base to start with, and then it's just a bit of fine tuning and uh, getting that car into shape. But hey, I'd be more than happy to race this thing at 96. That is still fantastic. Um, it's actually going to probably be slightly better than 96 because I know it's probably another click to the left for handling. So hopefully, hopefully that was good for you guys. If you enjoyed the video, please smash that like button down below. Make sure you subscribe. It costs nothing at all except a bit of self-respect. And until next time, take it easy.